room, whether you're watching online right now with us or later, thank you for... God and King. Well, good morning, church. God's blessings to all this Sunday morning. We're so glad that you're here worshiping with us this morning. I have a few announcements. Uh, we have Sunday school today for children up through fifth grade. The kids will be escorted down to the classroom after children's time. And then parents pick them up downstairs, turn right at the bottom of the stairs, and it's the last set of double doors on the left. Join us for Lunch Bunch on April 22nd at noon. Please let Nan Olson know if you plan to attend. And then tonight at 5 p.m., since it's the first Sunday evening of the month, we will have Sanctuary. And if you haven't attended Sanctuary before, it's an informal worship experience. This special gathering in the chapel creates a sacred place and time for reflection and renewal, and it's led by Dana Drum. It truly is a wonderful way to connect to God and to each other, and I hope you can come. And bonus, it's still light outside, so you won't have to drive in the dark. <laughs> well, let's take a moment now as we stand and greet one. Oh, wait. Let's join together in our call to worship. 
please stand as you are comfortable. How shall we live when shadows gather? God's unquenchable light. We are also drawn into one another's presence. What was hidden has been revealed. We are woven together with all creation. When we live in the light, as God is in the light, we are with one with each other. Let us all who is God, who is in our light and salvation. Let's take a moment now and pass the peace with those around you. This song that we're going to play for you is called Rejoice. And as you could tell from our call to worship and our first song, we are rejoicing in the fact that everything around us is created by God, that we are one with it. All those flowers that are blooming, all the rain that is pouring. I don't know if you had the hail this week like I did. All the hail that comes down, all the gardens that are blossoming. This is Rejoice. day is sounding, singing a new song. Hear the angels echo. We are love beyond, beyond the raging sea. You're the life inside of me. I lift my hands and I rejoice. Rejoice, you're the reason. 
come alive, let's come alive, let's come alive, rejoice, for our hope that starts a fire in us, putting pride in us, rejoice, you're the reason now to come alive, let's come alive, rejoice, rejoice. This morning's first scripture reading comes from Acts in the fourth chapter. Listen now for the word of God. Now the whole group of those who believed were of, were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the, feet, the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. May God bless the reading and hearing of these words. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I want to invite any children who are here to come up. I have some Easter eggs. Easter is not quite over. So if you'll join me up here, come on up. How are you guys? What do I have here? What are those? Eggs. Did you play with these last week on Easter? Yeah? I, let's see if we can. What happens? Can you help me here? Let's choose this one first. Can you help me? Can you see if you can make that one stand up? Oh, that's a good job, actually. <laughs> what happens when you tip it over? It goes away. Oh, and it breaks. Now, this one feels a little heavier, doesn't it? And then let's do it with that one. What, hap what happens? Does it fall over? It comes back up, doesn't it? Guess what's inside it? Oh, you're figuring it out, aren't you? What is that? Play-Doh. Play but you know, when we put the Play-Doh in it and we push it over, what happens? Does it come back up? Well, you know what? Play-Doh is like God's love inside of us. Do you like Play-Doh? <laughs> Play-Doh is, Play is like God's love inside of us. And even when we get knocked down, God's love picks us right back up again. So we're never down for good. We are able to kind of pop back up. Like, just like that. Yeah, yeah. So, remember that whenever we're sad, do you ever get sad? No, you're never sad? <laughs> do you ever fall over? No. <laughs> do your brothers ever fall over? And that's it, make them sad? Yes, it does, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? Whenever, whenever there's something hard, God's love is still inside us and helps us get right back up again. All right? So let's, let's have a prayer together. Repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for your love. 
that helps us whenever things are hard and when we fall down so that we can get back up again. Amen. All right. You guys can go on back to Sunday school or nursery. Let's see. I'm going to take this. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, guys. It's hard to leave the eggs in the Play-Doh. <laughs> If you would join us in our call to our prayer time by singing, Oh Lord, hear my prayer with us. we enter into a time of prayer, I do want to share that we've received word that uh, Martha Butler died this weekend. Um, she was in hospice, and there will be a service um, celebrating her life in May, and so there'll be more details to come. Are there other concerns, uh, things that are on our hearts that we want to share in this community today? Oh, Battle of the Books, yes. Oregon Battle of the Books next weekend. I had a daughter that was in it. I'm not sure she even read all the books. <laughs> but they didn't win. But yeah, that's a, it's And I think Claire, Andrew, I don't know where she is in the mix, but she's been doing Battle of the Books and, and Cooper. And it's, it's a great way to get kids reading. And yeah. Other things we want to share. Yes, welcome, Dave. We're so glad to see you. Other, other joys or concerns we want to share this day? All right, well, let us pray. Oh, God of love and light, God of crucifixion and resurrection, God of vulnerability and new life. Indeed, hear our prayers this day. Because we trust that when we call upon your love and grace, 
you will answer. This day we come celebrating the goodness of spring, the flowers that are blooming, the signs of new life, the excitement as we move into a springtime when kids are still in school, but building upon all the work that they've done over the last year. We give thanks for connections into, with our community, connections with one another, for healing and presence, especially with Dave being here among us. We also give thanks for lives well lived, O oh God, for Martha, as we prepare to celebrate her life. We pray for all who grieve this day, wherever they may be, for the things that go unspoken aloud but remain in the silence of our hearts that indeed, O oh God, your light shines upon and you see them and you care with grace and love. We ask for healing where it is needed. We ask for full bellies and full hearts where they are empty. And we pray, O oh God, that you might continue to beckon us fully into your light so that we might trust and follow in the way of Jesus, whose name we pray as we sing together. Sorry, we have a moment to confer. <laughs> Please join me in the prayer of the community. I am so sorry. <laughs> no problem. 
It's now time for the reading of the second scripture. This morning's second scripture comes from John in the first chapter. Listen now for the word of God. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you that the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do uh, do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, As he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. May God bless the reading and hearing of these words. Thanks be to God. Thank you. So I don't know about the rest of you, but my allergies have really kicked up. And it's been bad, so I may have to pause once in a while here. So good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be with you. Clay and Jen and Claire are in Texas visiting Clay's parents and taking some time to recover from a full Holy Week and Easter. And while they're there, if the clouds cooperate, and Clay and I were texting this morning and they may not, they hope to have a great view of the solar eclipse. So we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully Mother Nature will part the clouds, at least for a moment. Well, for those of you I have not met, I'm Reverend Dana Drum, and I've been connected to LOUMC, gosh, for about 15 years almost. And um, the primary setting in which I uh, do ministry is through governmental public health at the Oregon Health Authority. Authority. And I'm glad you're here today, and I hope you had a wonderful Easter and spring break if you're at a time in your life where you celebrate that too. So So I have been traveling more for work over the last months. In fact, this last week I was over in the Bend area for a work conference. And um, I've found that I've had to sort of relearn traveling after the pandemic Um, And if any of you have been in a TSA line recently, you know that the rest of the world is trying to relearn how to travel as well. But one of the things I have noticed or remembered as if for the first time is that hotel room lighting is very inconsistent. And there are some places it is so dark And those tend to be the places that take the government rate for lodging that I have to adhere to. Um, 
it's so dark that when you get dressed in the morning, you don't know if your clothes match or not, let alone if you're wearing dark navy or black. It's not until you get out into the sunshine that you can actually tell, and by then it's too late. Um, and then if that weren't enough, on the other side, some places, particularly in the newer hotels that are more LEED certified, they have these very bright LED lights, like the ones in my refrigerator. And I was in Eugene at a hotel, the Holiday Inn Express, and uh, the, it had these LED lights that surrounded the bathroom mirror. And um, those lights, you can see everything. <laughs> everything. There is not a hairline scar. Um, every little light blemish, um, you know, nothing goes unseen when you are looking in a mirror with those lights. Everything gets seen. And frankly, I don't like to see my imperfections. Who does? So that was the first thing that came to mind when I read First John in preparation for today. <laughs> And here I share part of that passage, this time from the message, that says, God is light, pure light. There's not a trace of darkness in him. And if we claim that we experience a shared life with him and continue to stumble around in the dark, we're not living what we claim. And it goes on, but if we walk in the light, God himself being the light, we also experience a shared life with one another. And then, if we claim we are free of sin, we're only fooling ourselves. On the other hand, if we admit our sins, simply come clean about them. He won't let us down. He'll forgive our sins and purge us of all wrongdoing. Well, when we are in pure light, like those LED lights at the Holiday Inn Express, God sees everything, and we may too. When I look in that seemingly unforgiving hotel mirror light, I see the chicken pox scar that's left from when I kept picking at it when I was four years old and my mom kept telling me not to. I see the frown lines that remind me that at times I can be very cynical and snarky. I see my eyes that more than once have looked away when someone or someones I know or don't know stood before me in need. And when I look deeper and beyond the surface of the skin, I see the times that I spoke or thought in a hurtful way to my partner or to one of my girls, the times I chose my needs over others' needs and I didn't have to the times I lashed out in shame and guilt at someone else because I didn't want, my own, want to own my own part of something going wrong or worse, harming someone else. And then I hear the elder, that's what they call the writer of this letter. It may not actually be a letter, but we can call it a letter. Who says that if we walk in the light, if we admit our sins, simply come clean of them. Acknowledge them and own them, I would say. We are forgiven. Look in that mirror, the elder is saying. We are not freed of sin. We are not free of sin, so don't pretend to be because you're just lying to yourself and to each other, and God knows better anyway. <laughs> Last month, I shared a, a writing by Glennon Doyle with the group that was at the sanctuary worship at, at, on that first Sunday evening in March, and in it, she writes about forgiveness as perspective, that not only zooming in at an event or an action or whatever it is that was hurtful to ourselves or another or creation, but also it's zooming out and seeing the whole picture, our whole stories that bring understanding and compassion and love because we see where we've come from that leads us to that moment. And we see where others have come from that have led them to that moment. It's not an excuse, or not to excuse what happened, but as a way to make sense 
and have empathy and compassion. And Glennon writes, this is how God sees us with that zoomed out perspective. And that's what forgiveness is. Seeing that that zoomed out perspective, it all makes perfect sense. And the response is love. So when I look in that LED lighted mirror, maybe it's not so unforgiving. Maybe if I look closely, it shows the exhaustion I sometimes carry and the way I've internalized perfectionism and shame over the years, and the way that sometimes I have served in situations with impossible circumstances. And it's not to excuse any sin or harm that I may have caused, but it's to see it in its full light as God sees us and to come clean of it. The light shows everything when we walk in the light. And it also shows the smile lines from the years of a big laugh that others tell me they enjoy and appreciate and miss when it's not around. It shows the change pigment in my skin that was the result of hormonal changes during pregnancies that resulted in two amazing women who cared deeply about others. It shows the almost faded scar from when I was a little girl joyously playing dress up in my mother's grandmother's sparkly shoes and fell and cut my head on the corner of the cedar chest. It shows the gray roots of my hair, which I admit I haven't brought fully into the light. <laughs> but they're still there, and you could definitely see them fully in the light. And I'm reminded of the months and years when that gray really started to appear, responding to the pandemic. And now it's aftermath and the global good I was a small part of and the many lives that were saved in Oregon because of that collective work. And looking deeper, I see the listening ears and the open heart that has accompanied some as they have traversed some really hard terrain in their lives. The light shows everything, all of it, our whole stories, not good or bad, but simply everything that is. Thank goodness. There's this often quoted line of Jesus is from the Gospel of John, which is in the tradition that this particular writing we hear this morning from. The whole of which begins, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Standing and walking fully in the light will make us free. <sighs> Take that in. Standing and walking in the light will make us free. We don't have to hide those parts of ourselves we're ashamed of or afraid of or feel that isn't good enough. And we don't have to hide the parts that we're proud of that have served us well and that we genuinely like about ourselves. We can own all of it, bringing all of us into the light so that we can be fully seen and the stories that led us there are fully seen and we can come clean of it and where needed, begin to heal and repair in love. The elder understands that this isn't really an individual nasal gazing exercise. The elder understands that all of this is connected and is about community. In the version Jeannie read, the translation that's used is fellowship. What we have seen and heard, we also declare to you so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father in Jesus Christ. And fellowship comes up again just a little bit later. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Eugene Peterson's message version uses the word communion. The Greek word which only appears twice and in this passage in 
the, the Johannine tradition, is koinonia, which means something like an active partnership in a venture. It's like full participation and engagement with each other and being in partnership with one another in the Christian community. And what the elder is saying is that our communion with God is demonstrated in the quality of our communion or koinonia with others. And friends, this may be the doggone hardest part, right? Because it's not just about those mirror moments between us and God that happen in private, perhaps somewhat in darkness even. It's about those mirror moments with each other and seeing each other fully and allowing ourselves to be seen fully. We live in a time of deep polarization. Our world and our political leaders want us to see only through the lenses of good and bad, us and them, for or against. Do you know what I'm talking about? And though that polarization gets weaponized to say you're wrong and I'm right, and what happens? People get hurt. And that polarization is not the truth that sets us free. Living fully in the light requires us to be open to more complexity, more nuance, and ironically, a lot more uncertainty. And it takes time to look carefully at and to deeply listen to one another's story so that collectively, we can be about the holy work of healing and reconciliation so that we can be about living out and making visible resurrection. I've been thinking about this a lot lately as I watch the destruction and death in Gaza and Israel and also holding the history of the Holocaust that some still to this day say never happened. And I've been intentionally listening to some podcasts that amplify the voices of people who are on the ground in Israel and Gaza and people who understand the complexity of those lands far more than I do. And I'm understanding that once again, politically, we have bought in to a false binary polarization that is being weaponized and it is not the truth. The truth is just as we all are connected and and dependent on one another, Jewish security and safety and Palestinian security and safety are interconnected and dependent on one another. And there are Jewish people and Palestinian people living and working in communities together And they are being harmed, all of them, in this process. There are voices like the organization Standing Together that I've I've heard them speak several times and that are trying to amplify this truth that the death and destruction is coming at a cost to both the Jewish and Palestinian peoples, with the Palestinians paying a much higher cost, which must be acknowledged, but nonetheless, Both are suffering because of the weaponization of polarized political views. Because if you're not 100% pro-Israel, you're anti-Semitic, right? And if you're not 100% pro-Palestinian, you don't care about human rights, right? And look at where we are because of that and because we're not bringing everything into the light and owning it and coming clean with it. But as I said, that's hard. And living and walking in the light is hard because it creates uncertainty. And in one interview, I heard a couple of leaders from Standing Together who are talking about working toward a new story of Palestinians and Jews finding a way to acknowledge the past and build a future that acknowledges Jews and Palestinians are here to stay despite the past, and then it's good 
for them to all be together. And they were asked, what does that new story look like? And the response was, I'm going to be very honest with you. We don't know. But I think we are building it. And if you've seen some of the news over the last couple of days, that might be starting to happen, maybe. And so in this work, I find deep hope because Jews and Palestinians are coming together to tell a fuller story of what is and making a way that brings people together rather than keeping them apart through weaponizing a false binary. That is what the hard work of seeing everything in the light and engaging in koinonia looks like. When we stand and walk fully in the light of God, God sees everything. And we see a lot more, too. And then we don't necessarily know what's next. In our faith tradition, we draw upon the symbols of Good Friday and the crucifixion and the risen Christ of Easter so that in standing in the light, for everything to be seen, that's the greatest vulnerability there is. That's our Good Friday. But then, in time, there's resurrection and new life. That's the story of Good Friday and Easter, vulnerability and new life. The truth will make us free. And how we live that truth with God is demonstrated in how we live that truth with one another. Friends, there are lots of places in ourselves, in our relationships, in our families, in our communities, and certainly in the world where we keep things out of the light. As a friend of mine says, she can really rock polarization when she wants to. I can too. Because it gives us, though false, a sense of certainty, even though it's a lie. We are called this day and every day to walk in the light, to fully see and to be fully seen as God sees, to come clean and own all of who we are, to lean into vulnerability and the uncertainty that for sure will follow, and to let that truth make us free. And so as we come to this table today, I invite you to think about where is a space, something that of yours that hasn't been brought fully into the light. And in the silence of your heart, name that as you prepare to come to this table of koinonia, of communion of fellowship, of love. And my friends, this is the good news today. Amen. So we all are invited, and in the United Methodist tradition, there is no prerequisite to share in this meal. All you need is a hungry heart to be in relationship with the Spirit and this fellowship, to be in koinonia. We're reminded that this meal is a means of grace by which we can receive the healing, forgiveness, hope, challenge, whatever it is that we seek. It is a reminder that God sees us and we are deeply, deeply loved. Whatever it is we come longing for this day is offered as we gather together at this table where the risen Christ is the host 
and we are the honored guests. Let's remember that on his last night, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. Friends who we know and Jesus knew were imperfect and sinful, who betrayed him, denied him, abandoned him. And when they stood in the light, in all of their humanness, Jesus still chose them as his friends and as the ones to carry the divine work of love and justice in the world. And in that same way, Jesus invites and chooses each one of us to join him at this table. So during the meal with his friends, he took ordinary bread, broke it, gave thanks to God, and passed it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is for you. This is the bread of new life. Likewise, after the supper was over, Jesus took the cup of ordinary wine that was on the table, and after giving thanks to God, he passed it among the disciples and said, Take and drink. This is my blood which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This is the cup of God's mercy and love. Whenever you share this, remember me. And so, gracious God, we now ask that you pour out your spirit upon this bread and cup and upon each one of us, that by sharing in this banquet together, we might become one with you and one with one another. May we be strengthened to go into the world and walk in the light of your love and by our words, but most importantly, our actions. Others will no longer have to hide from the light that makes visible their full, blessed humanity and know that they are loved. And we collectively join in koinonia that makes the joy of all creation complete. We pray all this in the name of the one we follow, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Here at Lake Oswego, UMC, you are invited to come down the center aisles to those serving. Receive a piece of regular gluten-free bread. You can dip it into the cup or take an individual cup and then return by the sides. We'll uh, invite the servers to come up and then we will serve the band and then we'll invite uh, the rest of the congregation up. Come to the table. All are welcome. Christ broken for you.
Our congregation's life and ministry depends on our giving. Although we receive some income, income from our building use fees, the vast majority of our income is from faithful contributions. And your generosity has helped us thrive. We've been able to grow our budget, expand our staffing, and continue to develop ministries that serve our congregation and our community. More than that, your giving helps us to care for our neighbors. Our Easter offering brought in more than $1,600 that will provide for the needs of our neighbors. It's a sign of a healthy and faithful congregation that we can support ourselves and be generous towards others. Thank you all for you do to make that possible. As always, gifts for the life and ministry of our congregation can be made at the donation back box on our welcome table. 
by sending a check to the church office or through our secure online giving page on the website. And as always, any questions about giving can be directed to our church office. Thank you for all the ways you support Lake Oswego United Methodist Church in care for our neighbors. If you'll now join me in the prayer of commitment. O God of light and love, we commit ourselves to following your lead more fully into your light. May our lives collectively make visible the resurrection process of new life found in justice, mercy, grace, and love. Amen. We're going to close with a song called Let the Light In, very appropriately. And this song is going to take a little bit of participation from you and concentration because I know it's new, okay? But here's the thing. I'm going to sing the verses in the chorus for you. If you know it, sing along. If you don't know it, sing along. They will come around again, and you will sing them again. We will get to a point where we are saying, open up the windows, let the light in. And it's kind of like a mantra. So you're, we're just going to repeat it a lot. And I want you to think about what that means for you to open up the windows and let the light in. Yes, please stand as you're comfortable. Thank you. For the sleeper to wake, it's time for the old winds to change. I hear the Spirit say, It's time. It's time for the dead man. Oh
Let the light in, let the light in, let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, let the light in, let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, let the light in. So go forth from this place, open up the windows, and let the light in, and stand fully in that light to be seen and fully see others, and go forth to walk in that light so that collectively God's love will be shown. Amen.